hi guys welcome to this video so i am going to be talking a lot about relationships and marriage today and if you don't want to hear about that then maybe this is not the video for you but i'm getting ready for our valentine's day date right now i already did my makeup this morning i'm just going to curl my hair and we're going to chat and we're going to have a good time so Let's just get into this video, shall we? First, let me tell you a tiny bit about me so you know why I have the credibility to even talk about these things. But I've been married for two and a half years. And then my husband and I were dating, I think also two and a half years before that. I don't quite remember. Maybe, maybe three. I still don't remember, sorry. <laughs> and then we also have been friends for 13 years, almost 13 years. So we've known each other for a very long time. We basically grew up together. I, also to tell you our ages, I'm 23 and my husband is 28. We do have a little bit of an age gap, but no worries. <laughs> the first thing I wanna talk about is marriage is the hardest and most life-changing relationship that you're ever going to be in. And I feel like we don't give marriage that much weight anymore. Especially, sorry, the cords in front of my face. Especially, like, in our modern-day culture, we don't view marriage with that type of reverence. And we don't think it's that important. And it really is. When you think about it, marriage is the relationship where you're the most vulnerable because your significant other is learning everything about you and they're seeing all of the deep dark secrets that you have while you're growing and learning about each other and it's such a vulnerable place to be in to be in that type of relationship with another human being is scary and i think that we don't talk about that part enough i'm gonna keep you moving around in this video so i keep your attention but i think i saw a tiktok or a reel or something about this where it was saying like that person gets to know everything about you and you should be in healthy relationships you should be growing from those places of pain from those places of hurt from things in your childhood that are still affecting you today that's what marriage is for it's for forming you and making you more Christ-like as you keep growing. Obviously, I'm a Christian, so that's what I believe. But even if you're not a Christian, I feel like that still applies, that marriage is a relationship where you grow immensely. This school year, I'm a senior in college, and my university offers free counseling to students. And I didn't really think I needed it, but I remember talking to Alec about something one day and he was saying, maybe you should go to counseling just because what's the harm in going to counseling? Like, why not? And I was like, eh, I don't know. But I ended up doing it because it was free and I was like, might as well take advantage of this free opportunity. So I started going to counseling in September of 2022. And it's honestly been very eye-opening to talk to somebody just about why I do the things that I do. Something that's been really great about going through this process while being married to Alec is that the things that I talk to my counselor about, the things that I learn that I really need to thrive, I will automatically tell him what those things are. And one of the examples that I'm thinking of is I have always had a, such a hard time expressing my feelings. I just first have a hard time even figuring out what I'm feeling, but also then I have to tell somebody about that. And I have such a hard time putting it into words. But as I've been going through this counseling process and learning how to express my feelings, I've had to teach Alec a little bit how to give me the space to express that in a healthy way because he's somebody that likes to solve things quickly and immediately and that's just not me so he's been really gracious through that process it's really hard for him to be patient with me but he's been doing great and i think that's part of the healing process since we're on the topic of me expressing my feelings i want to talk about communication next i have a hard time communicating my feelings 
I have a hard time communicating even like simple things like the to-do list I have for the day. Sometimes I just get really lazy about telling Alec what is on my mind and what is on my to-do list and I would just rather not tell him because it takes so much energy for me to tell him what's on my to-do list that day. That may not make sense to other people but that's kind of where I'm at. When I find myself in a situation where I'm choosing not to communicate with Alec, I have to ask myself what would be better in this moment? Would it be better for me to feel comfortable and to not put the energy into communicating because that feels good in the moment? Or would it be better for me and my husband to be on the same page because I communicated and now we can work together on something that would last longer. And I have to ask myself, is it worth the temporary comfort of not communicating? Communication is often a area in relationships where people either are great at it or they're really bad at it. And if you find yourself struggling with communication, I would just ask yourself, why are you not communicating? And it could be just like me where I'm feeling lazy about it and I don't want to communicate and you can deal with that on your own. Or it could also be you're not communicating because you don't know how, which is how I've been feeling with my emotions. So I encourage you if you're struggling with communication to stop and ask yourself why am I not communicating with my significant other? Another thing I want to talk about with communication is it's so so important to communicate your needs with your significant other because most of the time especially as girlies we assume that our fellas know what we need or want in a moment and they normally don't <laughs> they normally have no clue what we're even wanting i actually did that today because today is valentine's day and we're not really going all out for Valentine's Day just because Alex's birthday was a few weeks ago. We're going on a trip, a weekend trip this weekend. We can't afford to go all out for Valentine's Day, which is fine. But I still like to make things special. I like to make things an event and to have fun with it. So I communicated to Alex this morning. I was like, since I know you're not going to think about this, and future me will be upset if you don't think about this, then I'm going to tell you it now so that you know this is what I'm expecting for Valentine's Day. And I just communicate that with him to prevent any further arguments later in the day. And honestly, it worked. So I definitely think doing that prevents miscommunication and frustration in the future it's definitely hard to lower your pride and communicate what you need but lower your pride and actually tell them what you need and what you're wanting <laughs> the next thing that i want to talk about is outside relationships when you're married or dating and this can definitely be tricky but i want to share something i didn't realize when i got married uh, nobody really told me about this and maybe this is not everyone's experience. We have found, especially since we moved into our house, that we just have the desire to hibernate. <laughs> not that we want to be antisocial, that we don't want to have friends because we definitely do. We like hanging out with people. We even like inviting people over, but we just don't like leaving our house that much. And I think the reason why that is, is because we truly are each other's best friend. And if you're with your best friend, then you have no reason to go out. And I feel like sometimes, especially when you're dating somebody or you're single, you'll look at other relationships and you are like, what the heck, why don't they hang out with other friends? Or like, they're always just hanging out by themselves and they're never doing anything they're always just hanging out by themselves and they're never doing anything with us and it's literally nothing against our friends but we just love hanging out with each other we truly like sitting on the couch and watching tv or movies or we like to play games together we play card games together 
and we like to cook together and we just like to hang out and that's something I definitely didn't realize would happen. I definitely thought our relationships with friends would be the same, but they aren't. At first, I definitely was kind of sad about that. I was sad that we would not get invited to things or something, but at this point, I definitely understand because we're in a different season of life than our dating and our single friends who don't have a best friend to hang out with at home. And I understand now that we are in a different season of life and I'm not sad about it anymore. But I definitely went through a little bit of a grieving time as I was realizing that we were not in the same place as our single and dating friends. But I still love our single and dating friends. We hang out with them pretty much all the time. We don't have a lot of married friends, truthfully, but I love hanging out with people and we actually love having people come over versus us going to them. Like if you know us in person, you know that we will always 100% invite you over. We just don't want to go to where you are because we like hanging out here. This is our favorite spot. So maybe we're just hermits. I don't know. Maybe other people have not had this experience. Now, I do want to talk about this because I have gotten questions from people that are either single or they're dating somebody is how me and my husband deal with relationships of the opposite sex, whether it's me and guy friends or him and gal friends. How do we do with that? And my pro tip, I guess, for that situation is if I have a guy friend, they have to be friends with Alec, otherwise they're not my friend. And all of the guy friends that I have have all been friends with Alec for a while. They've built that relationship with him. And even if there is one person that I met at school and he has become friends with Alec, even though he met me first. And that's what I think is so important because I don't want Alec to ever have the opportunity to doubt my faithfulness, my trust. And there has been a situation in the past where I had a guy friend and I introduced them to Alec and they were just super rude <laughs> to Alec and they were not nice to him at all. And I think it's because they liked me and that's why. And Alec ended up telling me, I don't feel comfortable with them. I just, I'm not a fan. I don't know why they treated me poorly. And I was like, you're right, that is not allowed. <laughs> so I stopped being friends with them. And honestly, I'm not upset about that because if they're not going to be friends with Alec, then they don't deserve to be friends with me. You know what I mean? And it works for Alec as well. He doesn't really have lots of girlfriends, honestly. I don't even think he has any. <laughs> and if he does, they've it's because we've been friends with them for years, like even before Alec and I have gotten together. And I am not worried about them because I have my own relationship with him as well and I think that's how we've been able to maintain healthy relationships with the opposite sex is just making it really open, really honest, and not leaving anything to secrecy. This is definitely unpopular but I want to share it anyways. If I get a text message from one of my guy friends, I even if it's something dumb, I just show it to Alec just because he doesn't deserve to doubt my faithfulness. So even if it's like, hey, I saw this and it reminded me of this conversation, I'll be like, Alec, I had this funny conversation with so-and-so and they just sent me this. And I just do that to be considerate because I care about Alec and I care about our relationship. And the next thing I'm a little scared to talk about, and if anyone of my family members is watching this, Please don't tell me that you watched it because I'd be mortified, but I want to talk about the physical stuff, about sex, and all of that fun stuff. I definitely grew up in an environment where we didn't talk about this very much, and that's why it makes me nervous, but I know this is on everyone's mind, and it's something that needs to be talked about, so I want to talk about it for you guys. I watched a TikTok that honestly was mind-blowing to me about sex and about this topic 
and it was saying this is from a christian perspective but it was saying that because when you're dating and not married sex is not what you're supposed to be doing it's against the bible that's what the enemy tempts us with the most is physical stuff is crossing those lines with your partner that are supposed to be meant for marriage but then something happens when you get married and it begins to transition from sex not being allowed to it actually being allowed and it being encouraged and what the enemy does at that point is encourages you not to do it and i did not realize that this was a thing that this was actually a struggle for married couples is continuing to keep that spark alive and continuing to do what god designed in marriage and i definitely have experienced that where there will be times where i'm just like i'm too tired i don't want to i'm too tired and i have been convicted of that lately because i know that sex is something that god designed and it's important for a marriage a healthy marriage and it's important for us to connect in that way and i've been convicted of that lately because i've been giving into my my humanness and my flesh that just wants to you know watch tv on the couch you know what i mean and i don't think that i realized that at all before i got married and nobody nobody i know has talked about that at all so i didn't know about this and that's why when i saw that tiktok it like opened my eyes almost i was like yes that's of course what's happening here is it used to be not allowed so we were tempted to do it and now we are encouraged to have sex and we're tempted not to do it and it's so crazy how the enemy works in that way and flips that switch in us now i definitely and i've talked to my friends about this for years i talked to friends about like physical boundaries and just how do you guard your heart when you're still dating when you're single and there's definitely no clear-cut way of protecting your purity a lot of christian circles have different rules or thoughts about this and honestly i don't want to give you boundary ideas <laughs> or boundary rules because i really think it's up to you and your significant other i feel like you know what is tempting to you you know what's triggering to you so you should determine those boundaries based off of what is tempting for you of course i also do recommend to not put yourself in situations where you can be tempted whether that's like spending the night together i don't recommend spending the night together like for some people a tempting situation may just be like laying down on the couch if that's tempting for you i feel like you shouldn't do that or it could be being alone in a car i've i think i heard that from somebody that they wouldn't be alone in the car for a while that was just triggering for them and that's what they didn't want to do and that's truthfully what i recommend i don't want to give you specifics i don't want to be like don't touch this or don't do that or whatever because you know what is tempting you know yourself the best so don't participate in things that would make you tempted the last thing i want to encourage you with when it comes to sex and physical things is I know it's a super taboo, unspoken topic in Christian circles, but don't let that be the case. I definitely think that's the enemy's tactic is to make it something that we don't talk about and then we end up struggling with it alone and we don't have resources to help us protect our purity or to help us maintain a healthy marriage that involves sex in it, you know what I mean? So I highly recommend finding safe people to talk to about it i definitely tried to find safe people to talk about this stuff with when i was still dating alec but 
all of those people that I asked to keep me accountable were not reliable and they didn't end up actually following up with me or asking me what I was doing to protect my purity and I feel like that was a real bummer. But I encourage you to find people that you know have your best interests in mind and that they actually want to see you as succeed. And if you don't have people in your life that are like that, I encourage you to pray for them because the Lord will bring you the exact people that you need in your life. The last thing that I want to talk to you about is building a life together, building a future together with your husband. When it comes to the dating part of this, I definitely feel like there can be a danger in planning your entire future around somebody because you may break up and you would be very disappointed if it didn't work out like you thought. But also, I feel like there's a danger in not talking about the future and not, you know, asking important questions like, do you want kids? Or where do you want to live? Or how do you manage your money? What are your plans in the future? Like all of those important questions, I also feel like we don't ask them in time. So I feel like it's definitely a hard balance to figure out when am I putting my heart into this too much or when am I not asking the right questions? And I definitely think that's up to you to know if you are awakening that emotional investment into a significant other before you should, before, you know, it's time. And before you're married, I think there can be a danger in people that are dating that act like they're married, but they aren't yet. But I also think that you do need to have important conversations. So I think that's really a tough subject and it's up to you on finding that balance. And again, just like the physical stuff, you know yourself best. You know when you're emotionally investing too much and when you're genuinely trying to figure out if this person is the right person for you to marry. On the marriage side of things, I think building a life with someone and building a future with someone is so beautiful. I think it's so beautiful. And Alec and I, we don't have kids or anything, but we love to have conversations where we talk about parenting and like, what if our kids are like this? Or what if they're athletic? Or what if they are into music? And like all these different things. And I think that's so beautiful to do that with your significant other. I know one day we're gonna look back on those conversations and be like, can you believe it? they turned out like this or they turned out like this and we'll be so excited for that and I just think that's one of the things that makes marriage so special is getting to invest that lifelong journey and your future with another person. We want a puppy before kids and I truthfully believe that training a puppy will break my selfishness a little bit and help me to invest time into taking care of something else, something that needs me and is depending on me. Because right now, nothing is depending on me. I mean, I do have plants, but I can go on vacation for the weekend and my plants will live. My dog will be starving. So I think I definitely need to have that responsibility. And that's why we're looking into getting a puppy. I think marriage is such a gift. It definitely is hard like I was talking about at the beginning of this video, but it's such a gift to be able to mature, to grow, and to try new things and adventures with someone that's doing it with you. So that's what I have to say on that. I'm gonna finish curling my hair. The hair truthfully is not my favorite because it's just so tight right now. Tomorrow it will look better when it's like looser, but this is what we're working with. So I will bring you on our Valentine's Day date next. Valentine's Day date night OOTD. This is from Altered State. 
these are American Eagle Doc Martens. Just ran up the stairs. So that's why I'm out of breath. But here is our day night fit. The sunsets are unmatched. Yes. Come on. <laughs>